So in presentation, what we are going to see is first we'll see the introduction of topic, what is battery thermal management, and then we'll see the overall picture of uh, battery thermal management, why it is happening, how it is happening, and what are the industries doing, and what are the component of battery thermal management. Then we'll see the basic uh, fundamental of the field, um, few equations which uh, which is really handy in designing the battery thermal management system. And then we'll see how design and simulations are happening in battery thermal management systems in current days. In a case study, we'll just see an example of battery thermal management and we'll see how it looks in actual vehicle. And then we'll see the evolution of field and then we'll explain the career path. So now everybody here for battery thermal management more or less aware of what is EV and what is happening all around the world. But I'll give you the brief introduction of EV because the traditional cars have impact on environment. They consume the fuel and they emit the CO2, which is like triggering a global warming point. Okay. So what is happening in industry right now? or if you say for government and everybody, everybody is trying to take a social responsibility. Corporate are taking the social responsibility. So the firms who were introducing the conventional vehicles since so many years, now they are trying to reduce the um, adverse effect of it on the environment or society or other stakeholder which is available. This is the one big um, picture of... Uh, introducing the EV in current market. Then other thing is that it's called benefits. I can say from 75 to 80 percent EV is cheaper than the conventional vehicle in the form of fuel as well as maintenance. As we have less moving part in EV, so we can consider that is maintenance also will be less. Okay. And one more thing nowadays in future or like currently we have a range of uh, electric vehicles which are giving a running range of 450 to 600 kilometers. Okay. So now we'll go for next thing. And in the thing is in India, what is happening? Our government also trying to push EV into the market. And this is the big reason why we are having this battery thermal management presentation here. Okay. So this is what is happening. In like, uh, near future or uh, in past, you might have seen or you will hear this kind of situations where you can see car got fire or um, somebody is pulling out the car from the market. And this and all bad things are coming with this. All the good news when I'm pushing an EV into market, but there are bad news about that EV also. So this is what happening all because of our battery pack. In a EV, battery pack have a lion's share of cost. I could say like 30 to 50% of cost of an EV coming from a battery pack. And if I am running a vehicle in Norway, which is like minus 10 degrees C, and India somewhere in Rajasthan or somewhere in Nagpur, where temperature is 50 degrees C. So I am running the electric vehicle in this all sort of environment. One catch is here, like the battery pack, which I have seen in the heart of a EV is like human being. It perform when it is comfortable, comfortable. When I am saying comfortable, it means that if my, I am keeping my battery pack within a range of 25 to 35 degrees C, it will perform really good. So some research suggests that like if my temperature is below 5 degrees C, then my battery performance will reduce. Or if my temperature is above 45 degrees C, I am having a life expectancy reduction of 50%. These are the research. So how we are going to tackle this kind of issue? How we will perform to the mark by using this battery? In this thing, we'll introduce a concept. So now we will see how battery failures occur. In previous slide, we have seen so many vehicles are burning and somebody is pulling out and all those things. So um, I'm here we'll have a 
broad picture of how it is happening we are not going into much detail of it so why it is happening like in a uh, electric vehicle there are many components which are affecting the battery pack i if i'll start with the bms which is battery management system a poor bms can harm the battery pack how if i am having a voltage drop in a battery okay so if my bms is not detecting then it can lead to some harm okay like that there are number of issues which are related to bms like a uh, late processing of the data which is coming from battery pack the failure of sensor readings uh or sometime what is happening because of bms my battery is fully charged but just because of bms i am not able to start my vehicle because the bms performance is really poor it's not able to send me information or send my vehicle information for running okay then we have a manufacturer defect when a poor cell can be imported and it has kept in a vehicle poor cell means if during manufacturing there will be some impurity in electrode or the it, the bulk cell come can come in or unbalanced electrically unbalanced cells can come in so these are all cause of related to battery pack okay and then then there can be short circuit also when if i'll give you example of uh, short circuit when my positive negative will get short that is simple short circuit if i am charging and there is some fault in charger okay that can short my battery which can lead to a very destructive results okay uh, while i am running the vehicle there is a um, component called dc link capacitor which can get short running and it can lead to again fire or heating of a battery and all those things so in this thing few are the short term uh, i would say uh, drawbacks or failures or few are long term failures like charging and overcharging i would say it is a these are the long term failure but in case of charging if i am charging with the more c for a particular period of time it can lead to a very disastrous result so and there can be mechanical designs damages which uh, for example if my vehicle is crashing into something so it can harm a fire or something and environment also will add some into this battery failure so you can see here there is a diagram which is showing a temperature range from 50 to 350 these are not like exact number of thing but you can see what is happening inside cell which can lead to a failure of battery at at the range of 40 to 50 there will be no heat dissipation if my vehicle is sitting or nothing is happening charging or discharging but when something is happening operation started charging or discharging then breaking of the ac layers will start then solvent uh, volatilization start these are the electrochemical reaction which can cause a gas release in a cell which can cause a bulging of cell so these are like it will affect it my cell or a battery pack for my life extent expectancy point of view okay but if my temperature will goes on increasing in that line you can see it can lead to a blast also so we need to control this sort of temperature variation while driving or while charging that's what we are going to introduce a battery thermal management system what is a battery thermal management system actually by definition for a battery thermal management system for of safety performance both power and capacity wise and a lifetime i simply keep my battery in a controlled temperature environment uh, which leads to no risk of thermal run up okay so these are this is the definition now we will see what is the thing battery thermal management is battery thermal management is nothing but simple i'll give you example if i am hot or a human being is feeling hot what he will do he will go to a ac room or he will go to a room where fan is available or he will go and take a bath as simple as that so battery thermal management is nothing but cooling heating insulation and ventilation okay so let's see what is cooling so we as we have discussed that my electric vehicle are running in 
various environment where the temperature ranges from minus 10 to 50 degree c so if suppose i am running a vehicle today in nagpur okay and nagpur temperature um, during may month it will go like around 47 48 46 at that time running my electric vehicle well, is really difficult without an safety issue okay so what i'll do i'll just try to cool the vehicle when my temperature will cross certain limits for example i'll send a message to my bms saying that my battery box is at 40 degrees c so what it will do it will start cooling the battery box so we'll understand this thing how cooling is happening. okay heating in case of like europe or in india if suppose i'll say in case of like delhi in winter delhi temperature will go like minus um, sub 10 like 9 7 8 at that time also my battery will not perform okay insulation for example i am having extreme cold or extreme hot weather and difference between inside and outside is much larger as compared to the mild weather okay so battery can fall and rise to the extreme okay but a good insulation can slow down this rise and fall okay ventilation so as we have discussed in prior slide like after certain temperature some electrochemical reaction will happen and it to lead to release of gas or something so that release of gas i need to take an i need to be battery thermal system should be taken care of okay so now we will see how it's happening we'll go into little bit of basic so when we are talking of battery thermal management how this is happening because of this and this so why heat is getting generated in a cell okay so mainly when heat generation is happen in the cell this is because of two main reason one is electrochemical operation and other is geolocating and one more thing is there which is ambient ambient also contribute in heating of cell like if i am keeping my vehicle in a parking which is like uh, in a sunny day so my battery pack after 4 5 hours it will get soaked to that particular temperature that will leads to a uh, temperature rise in a cell so now we can see the equation this is the simple equation it's a heat balance equation where left hand side we have given the heat generated or heat rise in a battery box or heat gain by or loss by a cell okay and i square r is nothing but the joule heating of the cell i is the current flowing into the cell and r is the internal resistor of the cell i square r is the it can be changed uh, with respect to the calculation you want to do okay uh, now second term is delta s term delta s term is nothing but the entropy inside the cell which is mainly happening due to the electrochemistry of the cell and third one is the convective term like for example the heat taken by the fluid or uh, liquid or solid whatever you say from a cell okay so you if you can see this is like simple ah delta t which is like newton's law of cooling so we'll see how it if i'll contribute if i'll see this equation this is the overall heat generation of the cell so now we are trying to go for basics why i am telling basic is like complete battery thermal management system design is depend upon these three basic fundas one is conduction convection radiation many mechanical engineers will be there they know this thing in detail but still i'll explain little bit conduction it is due to the lightest vibration of a molecule it can happen in because of in solid because of free electron but in case of liquid it happens due to collision of molecule and diffusion of it okay convection is nothing but the bulk motion of a fluid which is the combined effect of conduction and fluid motion radiation everybody knows this is because of electromagnetic wave when there is no medium is available so we will see how we can connect this thing to designing of a battery pack okay so now you see if you, if you can see the figure see for example this is my battery okay where i have written the cell and, and these three cells are stacked okay and then i am trying to 
cool this or heat this cell by flowing the fluid it can be air it can be liquid okay so what i do but what is happening here the heat generation will happen in cell because of first equation what we have seen which contain the internal resistance entropy chain and the convective things um, which is coming from ambient so this heat generation we need to take away if temperature is rising we need to take away this heat from this channel so what is happening if you see the first equation this is nothing but the convective uh, equation newton's law of cooling okay so what is happening here the heat generated in a cell is q a is the area of cell and h is the coefficient of heat transfer okay and this is my delta okay so what is happening from first equation what we will do we'll find out the q q is nothing but the heat generated in the fluid so a i have a is nothing but this area of the cell okay h if i am using air or i am using water what is the speed what is the other parameters i will find out the h of that thing t cell what is the current temperature of the cell and what is the inlet temperature of the fluid okay so i will find out the q inside the channel of a fluid okay now what i will do next i'll put this q here and then i'll try to find out the temperature outflow okay. so this is generally the end result of a battery thermal management system that how much heat is taken by fluid from a cell okay so these two basic equation we generally use okay so now what we can see in this graph is a already is fixed but h can improve my cooling or it can reduce my cooling so if i am using air in this particular system or in this channel the heat transfer coefficient is near to like 50 or 25 if it is forced uh, convection and in other cases if i am using what water heat transfer coefficient in the order of 10 raised to power 4 okay so mainly from this particular diagram we can say that effectiveness of a thermal management system is changing with respect to the fluid i am using okay so as we have discussed little bit of technical here now we will see what are the battery thermal technology available currently and how it works okay so now i when we have spoken about in prior thing that i need to take out heat from battery by using any kind of fluid so here i am talking about air cooling of uh, battery thermal management system in this thing basically air is used at the medium of heat transfer so now if i'll see first this passive system in passive system what is happening the battery pack somewhere in battery front or back whatever it is uh, cabin air which is like air conditions air or available air in the cabin we are directly blowing on the battery pack it's like i am sitting in a room which having a fan so whatever air is coming from ambient um i am the heat is taken care by that um, particular air only okay and it will come come out okay but in case of active system what is happening the air which we are sending in the battery pack so that we can reduce the temperature of battery pack we are using anything like evaporator or chiller kind of uh, mechanism which can reduce the temperature of air for example my battery is at 45 degrees here and my ambient temperature is at around 42 or something okay so what is happening if i'll blow the 42 air 45 my my battery pack temperature max it can go to 42 but what i'll do in that case i'll reduce the temperature of uh, air here up, like for example 30 so what is happening i can reduce my battery pack temperature up to 30 there are many losses and other things that we'll discuss in detail in course and all similar to the air cooling system as we have seen in earlier slide that h will increase from air to liquid so let's see what is liquid cooling system of battery thermal management Huh? so as we have seen that active and passive liquid uh, air cooling system for battery thermal management now we can see the um, passive liquid cooling system so in passive liquid cooling system what is happening here is simply i am having a pump 
which is flowing water into battery pack water is getting cold in radiator by using fan this is as simple as that but in this passive system the disadvantage is is having no ability to heat up the system because we don't have any heater available or uh, evaporator available here okay it's a closed system where uh, we will be having a uh, arrangement of liquid cooling plates and all other thing we'll come to know in upcoming slide how liquid cooling plates are there and all other things so in this case what i can do i can just improve the performance by using the fan but there are many other disadvantages attack attached to it is like fan if i'm using more fan then it will be having more noise or more power consumption or uh, vibration issue can come and it's totally depend upon ambient they are coming in from this fan and going into radiant uh, radiator and then it is going into battery now we will see the next liquid cooling system and heating system this is the system generally industries are using it they can they are they might use this thing in advanced form of it but this is the overall concept they are using so as we can see here there are as we can see here there are two loops primary and secondary primary loop is all about battery secondary loop is about air conditioning okay so secondary loop is about refrigerant cycle it's normal ac cycle where what is happening i'm i um, people might know about this thing just i'll explain in brief what is what is happening in the secondary cycle if i am having a compressor we'll start from compressor so a high temperature and high pressure gas will be present in the compressor and it will move toward the condenser so in this case when i am trying to cool the system it will act as condenser okay so now what is happening this high pressure and high temperature gas will get converted into high pressure liquid here in condenser then it will do to move to expansion valve in expansion valve it will be converted into low pressure liquid and then from expansion valve it will go to evaporator it will lose heat to the coolant okay and then it will convert it into cool low pressure gas so now what is happening this is the refrigerant cycle and then what is happening here my battery pack is hot what is happening my battery pack we are getting the heat we are sending a cool coolant in a battery pack okay and then that cool coolant is taking the heat from battery pack and getting heated up and that we are pumping this into continuous circuit closed circuit it is losing heat your operator is losing heat here coolant is taking heat here okay so now if i am i can use this thing for both like Um, heating and the cooling purpose also in case of uh, heating this will act as the condenser in case of cooling it will act as the evaporator or i would say this will act as a chiller and heater so in advanced system there will be ptc heater available or many advanced uh, component will be available so we this is the basic of it so this is our liquid cooling and heating works